My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. Well, I mean, I can promote the person who plays me. I mean, he's a pretty grumpy man, I guess, normally. But, you know, he's all right. His name is Reed. You can find him at Warrior Streak on Twitter. I don't know why they would name something Twitter, but they did. And Instagram, whatever that is. And you can find him on Whiskey Magic and Destruction, Thursdays on the Games Tavern. And occasionally you can find him in other shows like that Minnie's Paint Show, where apparently that guy paints little tiny figurines. I keep calling them dolls, but he tells me they're not dolls. They're action figures. And uh, he's also the host of the Games Tavern Happy Hour, which, frankly, I'm indulged because anything that involves a happy hour sounds like a delightful treat to me. So (laughs) it is what it is. That's what he does. You know, I just have him along for the ride, usually. Someone once asked me what my accent was, and they said, is it, is it English or whatever? And I don't know what English is, per se, but it's not English, it's pretentious. That's what it is. To be fair, I don't know what my accent is either. It varies between Russian and Scottish, I'm not entirely sure how it does that. What is Russian and what is Scottish? Those are very good questions. I've been lots of places, haven't figured out the answer to that. Well, I'll drink to that. Let me open my flask. Isla, by the way. Say again. Isla. Isla. Are you the proprietor here? Uh, one of them. Uh, this is the Happy Axe Peak, and you're more than welcome here at any time. Um, the Hurdy Gurdy player is coming off in about fifteen minutes, so if you don't like the music, don't worry; it'll change. Oh, I don't mind it. I've had to listen to worse for longer. Mm. Ever heard? Been stuck in a room with three people playing bagpipes. Terrible. Pipes with a bag attached. It sounds like something terrible that the dwarves or the gnomes would concoct. Anyway, uh, wh- wh- where'd you come in from? You're you're in water deep in the heart of it, and uh, did you travel far? I've traveled a little bit everywhere. I'm not entirely sure how I ended up here. Is okay. You sound like you're having a, a a rough day. Sit down. Have a have a drink on me to start you off. Appreciate that. I'm curious, what's your story? How did you end up owning it, well, at least partially owning a tavern in Waterdeep? Oh, well, that's another long story altogether. But uh, we can get to that. Here's your drink. My name's Rin Drakewood. It's a pleasure to meet you. Rin Drake. I believe I've heard that name. Can't play swear, though. Hmm, probably on wanted posters north and south of him. Yes, that would be it. Yes. Usually having to take down once for some of my acquaintances. It's, yeah, no, that's where I've seen it before. Oh, that sounds terrible. That you've taken them down for your acquaintances. And yet wonderful at the same time. Were you hunting them down or were you trying to help them? I was trying to help keep the heat off of them long enough to get them somewhere a little safer. Well, then I'd like to introduce myself as an acquaintance. So what exactly have you done to get in so much trouble? Um, to be honest, nothing. What I did is, well, work for the wrong person doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. And uh, what I've done since is done everything possible to try to make it right in some small way while still making a profitable business here and there. Challenging. Challenging indeed. I would imagine so, but it's a good goal to work towards. Who is this person and how did you get involved with them? I think that is for a couple drinks from now. But to get started, I used to live here. Unfortunately, well, I've been doing a lot of living since as a man who can't remember his past. Strangely enough. 
And amazingly, that is a lot more common than you would think of people not unable to remember. Well, unfortunately, at one time I did know who people were, and I have pictures of them around here somewhere. And and Gherkin, my faithful servant,、uh, Gherkin Stockwell, he's a wonderful man, cooks like nobody's business, has a little thing for for performance as well.、Um, he remembers people, but. He didn't know my family per se, so, well, I tell you what, I'll start at the very beginning. A long time ago, roughly four years ago, I was in the employ of a man named Dorn Greycastle. You might know of him around town. He's the Greycastle, one of the noble families of Waterdeep. I know of him. We don't always get along. Oh, you do know him. Hmm. Maybe I should be asking you questions. Nonetheless, Dorn used to be my employer, and in many ways, he was almost a father to me. He,、uh, well, he did a great many things in my favor. He noticed that I was、uh, pretty good at remembering things, and I had reported some things、uh, early on while I was in the employ of another that、uh, would have put him at risk. Thanking me, he offered me quite the job. As I took the job, he began training me. I became a a spy, if you will. I'd gather information. I'd save his life, kind of too. He became like a father to me in many respects, and I, like a son to him. A year or two in, continuing to do well and handle things, we occasionally would、uh, well remove a problem from Waterdeep. You know, the occasional. A、wizard who is trying to import illicit goods, supposedly, or perhaps a, a fellow merchant who is、uh, also trying to strong arm various people and raise prices. At least that's what I was told. I imagine that wasn't actually the case. No, it was not. Unfortunately, I was lied to, and I was taken in as a young. Naive man trying to do good for the world by doing a few bad things here and there. Another common story. Yeah, I was quite good at it. There's no information I couldn't uncover. There was no,、uh, well, person I couldn't get to, at least for the most part. And I created quite a network of informants and so on. Well, all that came to a head. As I、uh, had an informant that I'd been cultivating for a few months, provide me some information. Unfortunately for me, it turned out to be a Zentarum Black Network double agent, who provided me the wrong information, and henceforth we, well, removed the wrong person from life, which created more problems. I would imagine so. That's probably what they were going for. It was. It was a double whammy for them. They got to remove one of their rivals, and we, even though we did it well and they, no one knew who it was, it also damaged our requirements. Greycastle was infuriated. He thought that I had turned on him and fed him wrong information on purpose, sending me back while I was out looking for the source of this information. He put out a hit on me. That's rude. Well, he he went all the way, while I was in the dark ward searching for the source that I was supposed to meet up with. My house was ransacked and my fiance murdered. Jessie Ironwork, you might know of her as well, her noble family,、uh, well in Waterdeep and trade routes up north. I did hear about that. I'm sorry to hear that that happened. It's no easy thing to lose someone. It's terrible, especially like that. Terrible. I look forward to the day I get vengeance on that one. We'll see if I can do anything to help. Yes, yes. Well, at the end of the day, I found the person, but unknowing to me, they knew about the hit and were trying to get paid off. I fought my way out of it, but took a terrible head injury and fell into a basement window area. I was accosted by spiders, and、uh, well, I hate spiders to this day. Can't stand them. Don't know many people who like spiders. Not the fan either. Gherkin, my servant, had managed to go out earlier in the day to get some food for the pantry, and 
managed to not be in the house when it was being raided and ransacked. And, well, as he was coming back, he saw the brutes leaving with blood on their hands and waited for them to leave, took a few steps inside, saw what had happened, and immediately left, searching for me. That's a good instinct. Yes, well... I think he's very much got a good set of uh, policies in his own head about uh, self-preservation, if you will. A few days later, he found me face down in an alleyway where I had crawled, barely conscious, mostly dead. He spent a day or two getting me back up on my feet, paid an illicit clerk to give me a little bump up there, and uh, we proceeded to try to find a way out. Uh, we made our way out, thanks to some help. A lovely lass uh, and friend of mine uh, and fellow smuggler, if it will, uh, managed to get me out of town in a caravan of hers that was moving goods anyway. Oh, if you're smuggling goods, why not smuggle people as well? I know a few smugglers who are good for that as well. Well, if you're ever looking for something, Brightwood Caravans is an excellent way to move anything you need. I shall keep that in mind. Oh, the hurdy-gurdy player is off break again. Oh, well. Well, anyway, Genevieve got me out in hot pursuit because they figured out I wasn't dead. Unfortunate. Usually when people think you're dead, you want it to last as long as possible. I know someone who had it last about 20 years before someone figured out she was still alive. How did you do that? No, it wasn't. It was a paladin I met in another. Uh, it's a long story. Long story. Well, I'd love to take some tips from them. I made my way down to uh, 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 Triel and Trialta and uh, fell in with another lot temporarily until I made my way back up here. There are no lasting repercussions or people still after you, or did I not realize who you are? Oh, I can't leave this place looking like me. And as far as everyone's concerned, Rin is missing. Dead, even. You never know. That being said, I secreted myself in here and uh, with some of my best friends, Olvir, Kalen, Storm of the Mountain, Fitz, and of cor- course, Bope Whizbang. The most interesting old coot of a gnome wizard you'd ever meet. Olvir is the person who brews the uh, famous Olvir's own ale here. Well, he's amazing. Really? I've heard good things about that. I've been wanting to try it. Oh, well, here, let me... It's only a, a gold, a mug. It's that good. It says the gods themselves have drank this and smiled. Would you like some? Sure. Excellent. Hold on a second. I'll pour you some. There you go. Enjoy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Wow, I haven't had anything this good in... Uh, yeah, no, your your statement seems rather correct, my friend. Yes, well, that's his little secret on how he does it. But suffice it to say, that's what he's doing down in the cellars below right now, is brewing up a, another batch. Anyway, we accosted the city, found our way around, and uh, whereas my friends can walk around in the open, I still cannot, until I clear my name. Imagine that would be hazardous for your health. Well, it's hazardous enough, but I have my ways. And I cast Disguise Self and change my appearance. Huh. Always a very useful trick. Yes, yes. Well, it gets me around as I need to. Drop the disguise. Now, where would you be wanting to go next? I don't know. I kind of go wherever the road takes me. I'm curious as to why the road brought you back here, though. You could have gone anywhere. Why come back? Well, that's a very good question. Mostly vengeance. Valid reason. You see, my friends have helped me a little bit, but there's only so much I can ask of them. We started this adventuring company after, well, making away with quite a bit of money from some very, very bad people. However, the adventuring company is profitable as as long as we can adventure and find, well, monies. So... I've commissioned several other groups, uh, willingly, who run around. Bope is off gallivanting with another group right now. I, I, I need to write him a letter to make sure he's okay. Uh, Fitz, unfortunately, uh, died in one of our adventures. And, uh, well, Kaylin is still here and Olvir is still here. And, uh, 
uh, Storm of the Mountain, well, she's adventuring as she does uh, within the city for now. But it, it's all good. We have another group. They're even right now as we speak, just left to go up to uh, find a, a legendary uh, forge mine of uh, Rundagar uh, somewhere or something. Rundagar, I can't pronounce it. It's a dwarven name of some sort. Really? Mm-hmm. I've been curious to try and find one of those myself. You'll have to let me know how that goes and what they're able to find. Oh, well, maybe we'll tell you. We'll see. Such a find is of great secrecy, of course. Oh, naturally. I respect secrecy. I've got quite a few items and enchantments that make it so even if someone were sitting right next to me like this gentleman's been trying to, he finally got the point when I wouldn't stop kicking him in the shins. But he hasn't been able to understand the word of our conversation. Oh, well. It's useful when you meet with interesting contacts. Well, that's wonderful. And have conversations that are better for no one to hear. Well, why not tell you what I've already got cooking up then? So, Dorn is screwed. He has no idea. We've been gradually pitting the Xanathar against his forces. Ah. Yes, as we've obviously taken measures to, well, damage the Xanathar Guild and the Zentarum, we've pitted them against each other and against Dorn Greycastles. Every time we, we do some damage to their their shops or perhaps to their people, we you know remove them or rough them up. We leave a symbol of the other party there. So they're all fighting with each other. That is genius. In addition to that, we've secreted some paperwork with his, well, his, one of his great assistants who is filing the paperwork with the city magisters for, you know, his usual things, business contracts and everything else. Well, in those contracts, sealed by his own hand, uh, we've slipped in some additional paperwork that looks like business paperwork, but uh, two weeks later, as the illusions faded, it's his last will and testament giving everything to me. Everything. All of his assets, all of his money, all of his contracts, everything. And because we've done this so well, when we finally enact our revenge, we just go to the local courthouse, pull the sealed documents, and proceed to gather our inheritance. That's rather genius, though. There may be some questions as to how you're suddenly not actually dead or missing or whatever they think you are. Oh, well, that's easily explained. You see, we faked my death and faked his anger to protect me, knowing that I would be the heir to carry out his future plans, of course, and knowing that well, his rivals would attempt to have me killed if they knew. You've spent a lot of time thinking about this, haven't you? I've had a lot of time alone in the cold to think about this. Uh, nothing like anger to keep you warm at night. Yes, so in between those actions, I go and, well, acquire things. Yes, yes, people send me on contracts, acquisitions, all sorts of things, and we take things from people and give them to other people for money. I love this job. Sounds like a very lucrative but potentially dangerous job, unless you're doing it right. And even if you're doing it right. Yes, well, my next part is is probably a little bit more interesting. I've well, over the winter, uh, I apparently got involved in a little bit of a heist. It was a bit of a problem. Um, working with uh, two twins, uh, quite lively, I might add, uh, Rowan and Holly were the names. And, uh, of course, a tabaxi named uh, Orias. Uh, well, needless to say, we were asked to steal some things from, well, one of the most powerful nobles of all of Waterdeep. That's a fun job. Yes, it was exciting, exquisite, and uh, unfortunately quite stupid. Uh, we did a great job. We got the goods. Unfortunately, they were some of the most evil goods on the, well, the known planes of existence. And then some that we don't know about, too, probably. Is that where those went? Well, uh, well, you, you know of these horns of Orcus? I know they were floating around somewhere. I've been trying to figure out where, who had them. Hard to get any information from anyone. 
Well, one of them is on Rowan's head, unfortunately, and and as my spies and and uh, uh, informants have continued to keep me appraised, she is still basically raiding the chocolate factory that is in Neverwinter. I have to literally pay about uh, 200 gold a month in chocolate to keep her just satiated. It's quite expensive, but, you know, the alternative is a very angry being with one of the most powerful artifacts in all of, well, uh, anything ever uh, attached to her skull and and now angry with a chocolate hangover. So uh, our goal is to keep her chocolated up the entire time. Um, and, and, and then at that point, once that's complete... Uh, we will, uh, well, um, well, we're looking for a way to get it off her. And, um... That could have gone much, much worse. Yes, well, in in a week or two, uh, I'll be leaving for probably Baldur's Gate uh, on my way down for another little uh, fiasco, we'll see. Uh, to get the one device I know that might be able to remove it from her skull. And, and at that point, uh, save Holly's sister. And, um... Well, in addition to saving her sister, possibly even, uh, 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 well, save the world. It's a little bit altruistic, but uh, you can't spend money if you're dead, and the whole world's dead around you. It's kind of, uh, yeah, bad. That's a fair point. If you need any help with that, I may know a few people who are looking for work. Well, I'll definitely consider it, but I'd appreciate it if you keep it on the down low. See, I'd rather people didn't know it was really my fault. See, I... I told her, because it hurt me, it, it made me very cold, and I said, well, if you don't believe me, touch it, and she did, and then it took her over, and she put it on her head. I don't want to be known as the man who possibly destroyed a good chunk of the world. So, if we could just, you know, keep that kind of quiet, uh, uh, I'd appreciate it, just a, just a smidge. Oh, don't worry, I won't tell anyone in it was a rather unfortunate series of events, but there, I don't think there was any way you could have known that would happen. What's amazing is how much chocolate Rowan can eat. I mean, that little half-elf can just cram it down and doesn't gain an ounce of weight. I mean, I swear, she just burns it off killing people that are bad. Or at least she did. Anyway. Elves can be very interesting. I don't know where they get the metabolism, but it's it's wild. I don't either. It, it must be in the genes. It could be. You said she is in the chocolate factory in Neverwinter? Yes, and it's one of the side alley chocolate factories. They make hot chocolate and they have chocolate and, well, I just keep that hot chocolate going. Okay, I'll see if I can get some people to keep an eye on her as well. That could easily get very unfortunate, especially if someone else is able to get it off of her first. Well, just in case... I've bought insurance policies for everything around there, specifically for magical destruction. Should she lose her stuff, I still get compensated fully. It's it's just one of those things you have to take care of. You know, if you don't do that, you can't make it. You, you gotta think ahead when you when you screw things up and mitigate risk with payments, of course. Huh? You know, it, it's what you do. Pretty forward thinker. I, I do, I do. Well, I mean, you've got to make money where you can. Uh, anyway... Um, so our next, well, heist is going to do something with that, maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, um, uh, aside from me possibly destroying the world, is there anything else you'd like to know? Uh, how's that ale? It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it is amazing. I can only drink it once a week, or I swear I'll, I'll gain 50 pounds myself. It's that good. I mean, no one's alchemist who could propose something that helps with that problem. Oh, well. Unfortunately, she would be a little hard to introduce you to. She's not from here. Oh, how unfortunate. Well, we also have Mastique and bean juice, if you wish to have some. It's some of the most, most delicious uh, beans. It, it, it makes this thing called, uh, a wizard explained it to me once, caffeine. Uh, it's delicious. That's what you call coffee here. I don't know what coffee is, but sure, that, that could work as a name for it, I guess. Uh, Mastican bean juice is a little bit long, but it sounds right, because it comes from Mastica. That sounds delightful. I'd love to try it. Mm-hmm. Well, we, uh, you know, have a, a long day. Let me get you some food, shall I? It would also be a good idea with how much of this we've been drinking. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Also, whatever's cooking in the back smells amazing. Oh, yes, yes. That's Bartholomew, our half orc cook. He's exquisite. Uh, we had to fire the halflings. They kept eating half the food. But it, Bartholomew has, has kept them all in line. And I swear, that chef is a miracle worker. Halflings don't tend to eat a lot. Also, I know in some places there's a family of halflings, or most of them are actually part of a thieves' guild. I don't think there are any here. Oh, no, there's quite a few. There's quite a few here. They're, they're rotten little little scamps half the time. But, you know, I like halflings in general, but between the hard cheeses of Daggerford and the, well, the gray rats here, I, I you gotta wonder sometimes. Most halflings are quite jovial. These kept eating my food. They're an interesting source. And also, they, they may seem jovial. Don't piss them off. They can get really scary. Yes, they kick your kneecaps right off. I mean, they're angry little bugger biters, I swear. Anyway, uh, well, Bope is is not like that. He's a gnome, but he, he would never bite me like that. At least I don't think. Uh, he took a strange liking to a, a whistle I had at one point. You know, here's another little fun story about me. I've died three times. That's not something you hear every day. How and how are you still alive? Well, in one case, I think is the most interesting. You see, there's another group called the Obsidian Spiders. They're an adventuring group, but, um, well, they're kind of a rotten bunch. Yeah, not a fan. We definitely don't get there well, very well. Oh, you know them. Well, that's all right. They're, they tend to lose druids quite quickly. Olvir and, and Bope were the only two who made it out alive from them. And, it, well, they, they came back and saved us. But unfortunately for Kaelin, myself, and eventually Stone at the Mountain, who, who was alive, but barely so, they dumped our bodies down a hole in a mine shaft uh, somewhere north of uh, Bandolin in the mountains there. From there, we fell all the way down, at least from what I'm told by Stone at the Mountain, something like 20 minutes our bodies kept... <clears throat> yeah, it, was, it was very painful. Uh, I wouldn't know because I was dead. I'm impressed your bodies survived that intact, or did they not? Oh, it did not survive intact. It landed in a crump of, well, meaty chunks and ooze, probably. Unfortunately for us, fortunately for us, and painfully so, it landed in a cave opening that was saturated in what something's called the Bearsiness. It's a... Uh, some sort of dark magical energy, and, and from what uh, uh, Gherkin has researched, uh, Gherkin Stockwell, my, my man servant, he's a wonderful guy, uh, he, 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 he tells me that it's something to do with when the drow were put under the ground in the first place, part of the magic that put them there. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but apparently when the dead are dropped in the fairsiness, they don't always stay dead. And I awoke in the most pain I've ever been in my life, conscious as my body in five minutes knitted itself completely back together and magically healed. That sounds like a horrifying experience to be conscious through. It was. It was. And just between you and me, and don't tell anyone else, I've never been the same since. It's hard to be quite the same after something like that. And how did you get out of there, though? Well, hold on. Ever since I went through that, I I see visions of the the Kinku assassin that, that killed me and threw me down the hole. His name is Whistler. He's a rotten twit, but every time I see him, he gives me advice that's helpful. That's pretty concerning. Yes, well, don't tell anyone. No one else knows about this. It's just strange. It, anyway, um, they stole my whistle, which Bob loved, and if I blew that whistle right, it it would make the dead rise. It's quite useful. If you, you know, you whack a guard or two, blow the whistle, the guards are still there, except now they're working for you. I could use one of those. Yes, yes, it's an amazing crystal and whistle. I wanted to give it to Bob one day, but uh, I never did find it. Anyway, they, they stole it from me. I've one day I'll get it back, maybe. I anyway, um, we got out of there by 
sh- well, after killing a few things, shimmying and climbing up、uh, the hole,、uh, where we found a couple giant spiders, and those were not fun,、uh, and made our way back up to the mines,、uh, where the people who had perpetrated our, our deaths had made their escape in a flying ship of some sort. Uh, an airship, big floaty things in the top and propellers on the back, and love airships. They're wonderful, but their first time on them, you're probably going to spend most of it puking over the side. I have never been on one. I've been in a cloud giant's castle once. It's quite exquisite. Ah, don't know many people even know those those exist. I didn't either, but a stairway came down, and I said, "Well." It's a giant floating cloud castle. How would we not go explore this? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, some things went wrong. Everything. Some things definitely went wrong.、Uh, but we survived. I mean, we, we managed to make it out.、Uh, no one, no one completely unscathed. Well, just the bad people. And、uh, Kaylin got a magic flying cat. I guess you might say a tressum, if you will. Magic flying cats are always a nice reward for near-death experiences. I think so. That happened before we went down the hole. No, yes, before we went down the hole. I think. Anyway, it, it was very confusing, nonetheless. Yes, very confusing. Well, you seem to get a lot of very weird circumstances. I suppose so.、Uh, isn't that what makes adventure adventure, though? That is true. Is that part of why you started an adventuring company, or was that mostly because you can't really leave here without people trying to kill you? No, I started an adventuring company for two reasons.、Uh, one, why live a dull life, right? Fair point. Gives me a reason to go out. Two, if you're successful, there's nothing more fun and easier to make money at if you're enjoying yourself, right? And and the other half of this is real, real. You make a lot of money. I mean, that's really the point. However, the world is strewn with people who are unsuccessful in adventuring. Most of them are dead bodies that people never find. Well, I've already died three times. Why not keep going? Made a lot of money. I never have to work a day in my life again if I don't want to. But where's the adventure in that? That's true. I probably could have retired and gone back somewhere far more comfortable a very long time ago, but. I chose not to. I chose to stay and explore and try and make sure the world doesn't end because it's annoying how often it tries. Exactly.、And、not just here. It's just it's everywhere and it's so annoying. Exactly. Exactly. Luckily,、uh, I have some friends.、Uh, the black staff gives me the occasional job, knowing exactly who I have and looking the other way as long as I don't create too many problems in the city. She knows exactly what I'm doing to well keep the peace by making the bad guys fight with each other as opposed to with anyone else. So she gives me occasional odd jobs that I do.、Uh, so she lets me continue to be here. <laughs> Unfortunately,、uh, I don't get paid a lot. For that sounds like a rather good deal, at least. Do you have some form of protection and something to do? It keeps me out of jail. <laughs> Not that they could hold me. No,、oh, I don't think they would be able to. Well, I'd certainly give them a run for the money. Another ale? Yes, certainly. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. There you go. Oh, the stew's ready. There you go. Here's some stew. Enjoy, enjoy. Wonderful. Outstanding. Glad to provide it. I think you'll find that the、uh, pork and the beef are a wonderful combination. The spices are, of course, going to hit several places on the tongue at once to create a great flavor profile. Those are some magic words that I heard from the half orc. I have no idea what any of it means, but it sounds like the words "delicious" should come to mind. That is what came to mind. Yes. Yes. If you'd like sandwiches, I love sandwiches. We can have those made for you as well. This should be fine for now, but.、Mm-hmm. You say you like adventure. Are there any places that you haven't been that you would like to go? Oh, distant Kalimshan sounds like a place of quite appeal.、Uh, perhaps even distant Maztica or Koratur,、uh, faraway lands maybe. But I would like to see more of Kormir. 
I'd like to find out more about the place where the purple dragon leads the way. Uh, it's the kingdom of the inner sea. I'm not as familiar with that one. What do you know of it? Not much. I've never been there. The closest I was there was uh, Trialta Hills, which is uh, still quite a few, you know, maybe a thousand miles away from Arabelle, the cabin. But nonetheless, I'd love to visit there someday, perhaps create some mischief. Naturally. Naturally. Naturally, and see what's what's there. But I think short term, I'll be taking some trips to Baldur's Gate and possibly Kalamshan. We'll see. I'll go to hopefully fix the problem where the world is about to end. Which I might be a little put off with you if it actually does. Yes, it would be kind of cataclysmic, yes. Well, in addition to that, um, uh, well, Kalamshan has what are known as coin mountains. Coin mountains are people who have so much money, there's a mountain of it. And, well, some of those people uh, might need some heavy weight of their coin and other treasures removed. So perhaps there's an opportunity there as well. Oh, some of them may have so much they may not notice any of it is ever missing for a long time. One can only hope. Oh, as long as you don't get into too much trouble later there. Yes, hold on, I need to refresh my Mirabar Mule. Mm, this is quite tasty. You mentioned... Do you not remember anything of your family? No, no, unfortunately I do not. Everything that happened before I had my head almost caved in... I cannot remember. I know my fiance. That's about it. Everything else was told to me by Gherkin, but I don't remember my parents, my uncles, my aunts, my grandparents. I don't even know where they are. They're not in Waterdeep, I know that. Or Neverwinter. Or points in between. We'll see. Do you know if this memory loss is magical in nature, or was it just you hit your head really hard? Well, when they did that, a couple things. After that, I began to see, well, little bits of strands of, after speaking to the Blackstaff about it a little bit, uh, the weave. So that's why I can do things like a little odd trickeries of magic here and there. It's not something I can do a lot of. I'm certainly no wizard. But I've been able to pull the strands a little bit here and there and watching some things both did and, and some things that the Blackstaff has shown me and, and occasionally the viewing of another wizard or two here and there as they're pulling at the strands, twisting them, tying them, rippling them, doing whatever it is they do. Occasionally I've been able to mimic some of the effects. Oh, that's how you could be able to do magic. I was wondering. A little bit. Most of what I focus on is uh, things that let me get in and out of places or be a surgical instrument of death, as needed. Good things to focus on. They help you live longer. Well, I know my place. When I work with regular adventurers, I'm obviously not the person who's going to fight the big dragon head-on. I'm not the person who's going to cast weapons of magical destruction like Fireball. Uh, I'm the person who you don't even know is there until it's too late, and painfully so. I've also been working on poisons, a few other things too, but uh, yeah, brain injuries are, are terrible things. They they create all sorts of problems for me, uh, headaches occasionally, uh, but for the most part, I, I deal with it. But yeah, it's been nice. Although I'd give up all the magic in the world just to have my memory back. Perhaps one day you'll find a way to get what you want. Maybe I will. Maybe that'll be part of my trip to Kalamshan. Maybe. Maybe. Would you happen to know who my parents are? You seem to know a lot. I do know of a fair bit more than I probably should, but that's not one of the things I know, unfortunately. I may be able to ask around with some of my contacts, but I'm not sure what all answers I would be able to give you. I'm limited in certain ways in what I can do. Unless the world is about to end, and then I can do a little bit more. Is that something you're just saying, or do you need a little more ale to, you know, make it easier for you to make a good decision? You're familiar with contracts, yes? Very. Let's just say I have a contract that allows me to do what I do with some very powerful people. 
And uh, there are certain stipulations of lines I can't cross unless very specific circumstances occur. Oh, I see, I see. Well, I specialize in contracts. Perhaps there's a clause in there. I don't know. One day we'll have to take a look at that contract. Let's see if I can get permission to show it to you. It's a bit tricky. You mentioned when you were talking about the horns, they were probably the most dangerous thing in any world? Pretty much. So you know there are others, yes? There's two of them. The bloody tabaxi took off with the other one. Meant the worlds, not the, the horns. Oh. Oh, I am now very con- I will have to look into that because that's probably not the good thing. Well, I've already got a plan in place for that one, but don't tell him that either. Uh, perhaps, of course not. Uh, he's, he's a sly one, that one. But uh, there's always ways. Naturally. I'm not from this world. Hmm. Well, where are you from? Somewhere that isn't anymore. The world doesn't exist anymore. No. There came a moment when it was either leave the people there and let the whole world fall to darkness and damnation, or get the people out and let the world just no longer exist. I chose the second option. That sounds terrible to lose everything. It was tough, but the people were safe and I eventually convinced the gods of these worlds to let me continue existing. At what cost? I... I'm just a wanderer. There's only so much I can do. I don't really have a home anymore. Well, please consider this place a home away from home for as much as you need. I appreciate that. Well, definitely be taking advantage. Yes, well, you never know. If the world does start to fall apart here, I might be here more often. Hmm. Sounds like a storm is brewing. I wonder if that's because I'm here. I don't think I pissed at anyone off when I was here last, but there's honestly no telling. Yes, well, we'll see. Well, while the storm's going on, please feel free to make yourself uh, relaxed. Is there anything else I can get you? Let me get these plates up. Nothing that I can think of, unless you have more stories you'd like to share. Well, of course, of course. There was the time... Well, no, that's probably not family-friendly. We won't discuss that one. Well, there was a... No, no, that... That involved a chicken and some feathers. Um, uh, uh, well, there was this time... No, no, that's that's certainly not bad. Not good. Well, there was this... No, jeez. Uh, ah. Uh, well, one day... I was stealing from, well, some very bad people here. The Dervinals, or the Dervals family. The Dervals family, we originally came across in Tribor. We were staying at one of the nicest places in all of Tribor. I forget the name of the place. Ah, Ever Wyvern's Rest, I think it is. It caters to the Watadavian nobility, and I walked in as a person different. I was uh, Ben Ironwood of the Southern Am Ironwoods. And, uh, well, as a different person i i uh, well i ripped off uh, one of the worst paladin groups that came in and were trying to throw around their righteous indignity about everyone else having fun so i took it their money and i donated it to the local uh, you know, uh the priest uh Olvir got really mad so i had to use it as a donation because i stole it uh, anyway uh so from from there we we pissed them off but as part of that we basically stole everything that the Dervals brothers had when they slept, including their clothing. That's impressive. Yes, we left them mostly butt-ass naked in the uh, rooms and uh, left with all of their belongings, all of their money, all of their signet rings, everything we needed. Uh, except for the one brother. Apparently, the others were poisoned. And, well, Ben Ironwood of the Southern Am Ironwoods was blamed for it. Problematic for attack if there's an actual Ben Ironwood. I'll never tell. 
Anyway, Ben Ironwood made his way back down to Waterdeep. And while I was there, I discovered that Dervall's brother had made his way home. And his father died and he got the inheritance. So, being the clever asshole that I am, I sent him notes from Ben Ironwood saying, we know what you really did because he poisoned his brothers and it would be a shame if word were to get out. So you blackmailed him? No, I scared the piss out of him. We knew he'd never acquiesce to our demands. That didn't matter. By shaking the tree, he suddenly took a lot of different actions and we were able to observe them. Slipping in, we were able to discover a few things. Turns out, Dervos was a foul, foul human being. There's a secret passage at the bottom of his place. We snuck in through the rooftop, because you got to start all the way at the top to get all the way to the bottom. A whole bunch of us came in after somebody got uh, disguised and turned into someone who looked like someone else and walked in and searched the place during the day and got out. It was amazing. It's like something out of a spy novel. Oh, wait, that is exactly what it was. Anyway, we then made our way to the rooftop, found the open hatch, went down, thinking we were going to find great riches everywhere. Only to find out the house was mostly stripped bare. We found the books in the empty bedroom of Dervos, which was mostly old sheets, not much left at all. And the book showed he had sold every last thing off for something. We couldn't tell what. Almost all of the assets, everything, gone. He had just a few copper to his name on, on paper anyway. And yet his house was, well, not maintained as well at all on the outside either. No one could figure out what had been happening. So, sneaking down, we found the secret passage in the stairway, walked all the way down and discovered great tapestries, infernal writing, all sorts of devil worshipping. This man was not only doing that, he was doing some crazy sacrifices involving demons and devils at the same time, which I don't know the difference, but I'm told they're different and they don't like each other. Really, no, it's, it's a useful thing if you're being um, confronted by one of each to know what makes them not like each other, but that varies and sometimes pitting them against each other doesn't work well. Well, the next thing we know... Somebody squeals, one of our own, and they all turn and look at us while they're killing people in their sacrificial way. Suddenly, we're now in a fight with all of them, plus this guy wielding some sort of crazy sword of some sort that he's using to, you know, murder sacrifice people, and whatever foul beings he concocts out of thin air to fight us. I was knocked unconscious completely silly while the rest of my friends fought them off. I came to... Was still wearing a cloak of a cultist and trying to figure out if my pants were still on when a few of them tried to escape. And, uh, well, we did whatever we needed to do to prevent that from happening. Uh, after that happened, we immediately made our way over to the Black Staff and said, Ah, uh, you might want to check out this house. It's very bad. We got almost nothing out of it. I was expecting thousands in gold just to fund the next major expedition so that we could get thousands more beyond that. We got nothing. You probably prevented a bunch of demons and devils from taking over the city, so that's something. I don't know that I really made an impact. There's rumors that a lot of the nobility have kind of turned their way to this for power and wealth. Uh, unfortunately, it was covered up completely for whatever reason. We tried to make ourselves the inheritors of that estate to gain some assets and perhaps some footing. To no avail. The Blackstaff wouldn't go for it, no matter how much I tried. Uh... Well, maybe one day I'll be a noble and more deep. Maybe. Then again, perhaps. If I do that, can I really adventure anymore? Coming down outside, isn't it? But it is. Hmm. Where is that musical performer? Hey, hey, hey! Quit watching out the window. Let's get to work. Get to work. I have to get some people looking into all of this demon worship sacrifice stuff. That never ends well for anybody. Well, we certainly ended it well. He'll never do that again. It's a little hard to do that when you're dead. Well, it was really weird. 
They were mostly naked when they were killing each other. It was very awkward. Just a little bit. Yes, yes. I will never understand why people go to that. That is what it is. Other than that, uh, aside from occasionally banging into walls and other such, one of the greatest things I have to deal with is uh, well, walking around in the dark. I'm human, you know. I don't have the the eyesight of an elf or a, a, a gnome, perhaps, that can walk around and see in the dark. So I got a hold of these little bad boys. You ever seen these before? Goggles of the night? I believe I have. They're not super co- I haven't seen a lot of them, but because most of the adventurers I beat can see in the dark, but they're very useful. Yes. These in particular, if you're in the Underdark, you see, uh, th- these were created by the giants themselves for humans. Apparently, there's a, if you're, they always give me an arrow in the, in the view that tells me the nearest way to go up and out of the Underdark. In addition to that, there's a little blip, and when I'm in certain places, if it can link to it, it links to the Graven Hollow Library. It gives me information. Now, it looks really stupid when I'm going, turn the page, turn the page. Turn the page. Next. Next. Search for book on evil demon creatures in the Underdark. If I have to talk it through occasionally, because I can't mentally will it, I have to tell it what I want, and it, people just look at me like like I'm a fool. Uh, uh, this this one wizard said, what do you think you are, in Google? And I have no idea what that even means. But it sounded like a n- nifty spell. I guess there's a spell called Google that allows you to, to find information. Uh, anyway, um... It gives me the occasional, you know, edifice of information. And then the other thing is, is we helped this one priest down in, what was it? It's just a town outside of Baldur's Gate. I forget the name of it, but Kel, Kelbio of Breezy Creek, Creek, the wizard there. He, he, he has wizarding spells and he knows the formula to make sending stones. And we saved his life from, from snake people. That's very, very useful and potentially very lucrative. Yes, well, he gave us the formula for that, and, well, we've quietly been making sending stones and selling them on the market here and there, but we never say we're the ones who are making them, because, frankly, if people knew we could do it, they'd probably try to, well, steal it. We like to keep our secrets, right? Secrets can be good, especially when things like that, yeah. I'm working on a special glyph to add to it that not only allows them to work as sending stones, but have a unique sending stone that lets us listen in on all the conversations. Ooh. So we drop a few here and there, except that we can also listen in. I just have to make sure they aren't able to reverse whatever the glyph is to listen in to you. Oh, we're going to sell it to stupid nobles. They never know how to do any of that stuff. They're just like, oh, I want special communications where other people can't get into it or they can't steal my letters. And we're like, okay, well, here's some rocks you can talk to and they'll send messages back and forth and no one else will hear them. And strangely, we showed them to a wizard from another place, and he just held it up to his ear and went, Mokakabizai! And we had no idea what that was even meaning, but that's what he did. And, and like he was supposed to hear something sometime. He said it reminded him of something called a, 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 a phone. Wizards are funny. They really are. And I do apologize. I think I see someone I'm supposed to be meeting with. Uh, it will be right back, though, but I do need to go talk to them. Okay, well, I enjoy Tales of Adventure is directed and produced by me, Brianna Toyber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure. You can also leave a review on iTunes to make our show easier to find for those who need it.